Lewis Hamilton's future with Mercedes is currently up in the air, as there has been no official word on his contract extension. Meanwhile, one of their fiercest Formula One rivals is making an effort to entice him away from the Silver Arrows. Ferrari's top executives made a two-pronged effort to sway Lewis Hamilton towards leaving Mercedes, as his future continues to be uncertain for the upcoming season. The seven-time world champion's name has been loosely associated with the Italian team for quite some time, and reports from Italy indicate that Hamilton engaged in discussions with two senior figures from Ferrari regarding the prospect of joining their ranks, but Hamilton chose to turn down the opportunity to make a move to Marinello. Hamilton's substantial 40 million per year contract with the Silver Arrows is set to conclude at the end of this season. Despite affirming some months back that his new agreement was essentially settled with Toto Wolff, the contract remains unsigned as far as the public is concerned. Amid increasing uncertainty surrounding the 38-year-old's continuation with the Brackley-based squad, there are reports that Hamilton has been presented with a contract proposal from Ferrari. These persuasion attempts were made by none other than Chairman John Elkin and Team Principal Frederick Vasseur. A number of ex-Formula One drivers have shared their recommendations for him to pursue the Ferrari opportunity. Martin Brundle encouraged Hamilton to go to Ferrari and do a Michael Schumacher, while former motorsport team owner Eddie Jordan expressed his belief that a partnership between Ferrari and Hamilton would be an ideal pairing. Leo Torini let his readers know about Elkin's lure attempt on his blog, writing that, Hamilton has been contacted personally by Elkin. I understand he politely replied, no thanks, and you can understand it. And as for Vasseur, he has admitted that he wants to work with champions. This ambition comes as he is tasked with rejuvenating Ferrari, having assumed the role of team principal for the year 2023. So it comes as no surprise that the Frenchman approached Sir Lewis with an offer to leave Mercedes, especially since they talk regularly, at least according to Vasseur. He told Gazeta de la Sport, I talked to him at every GP. He raced for me 20 years ago, and we're still close. I helped him when he went to McLaren at the start of his F1 career, and we talk occasionally. Clearly, if they see us together in Paddock, a fuss comes out, but the rapport remained. I don't want to compare him to our drivers, it wouldn't make sense, but the contribution of a top driver isn't just driving, it's also technical, strategy, help in hiring an engineer, and in this case, if you have Hamilton, Verstappen, but also Leclerc, it's easier. Anyone who works in F1 is passionate about racing, they like working with champions. Talking about the Lewis Hamilton contract saga, German reporter Michael Schmidt commended the Mercedes star driver for staying with Mercedes. He shared this information while writing for Automotor and Sport. Vasseur is rumored to have made Hamilton an offer, I won't deny it. I think Vasseur knows well that Lewis is not going anywhere, but he also has to make sure that Ferrari shows some dynamism. I also think Hamilton is quite smart. He knows very well that even if they pay him double in Marinello, things won't go any better there. Ferrari is not ahead of Mercedes as a car, and every problem at Mercedes would multiply at Ferrari, because it is even more in the spotlight. Hamilton turning down Ferrari might prove to be for the best, because some people don't think he's worth the trouble. Lewis Hamilton wasn't on the same level as Michael Schumacher or Fernando Alonso, according to an F1 driver who raced alongside all three of them. Over his 14-year career, Giancarlo Fisichella witnessed F1 championship triumphs by Schumacher, Alonso, and Hamilton, but Fisichella refuses to crown Hamilton as the best of the best, not even in the current era. He told Corriere della Sera, Michael Schumacher and Fernando Alonso are head and shoulders above everyone else. Fernando at almost 42 is living a second youth with Aston Martin. The car is fine, he puts his mind and desire into it. When asked to choose between Max Verstappen and Hamilton as the leader of his ideal team, Pisacela's decision was clear. Verstappen, it is the evolution of the species. Max has something more and gives the impression of driving with one hand. And as for his other driver, Toto Wolff has shed light on the challenges plaguing George Russell. Despite his efforts, Russell has managed to secure only a single podium this season. Right now, he trails behind Hamilton by 49 points in the Drivers' Championship, and over the last three races, the seven-time world champion has outperformed his young teammate. 
Mercedes opted for a design shift with the W14 during the Monaco Grand Prix, as it became evident that their initial concept was still causing the same issues that troubled the team in the previous season. Ahead of the summer break, Russell admitted that he hadn't fully grasped the intricacies of the car's traits, unlike Hamilton. This underscored the significance of their chosen setup direction, as it reinforced apprehensions arising from recent races. Wolf shared Russell's troubles with Racing News 365, saying, These cars are on the knife's edge. You can quickly fall off it and lose confidence. On the other side, if you're within that corridor of sweet spot. Having said that, the car has no sweet spot. But being more in that zone of understanding what it will do next, I think there's a big difference. You can quickly be in either one of these situations, and obviously it goes against you or for you. Despite this, Andrew Shovlin firmly believes that George Russell has the potential to eventually secure a Formula One World Championship title. But the trackside engineering director emphasizes that this achievement hinges on providing him with the necessary vehicle to realize this ambition. During the Hungarian Grand Prix, Shovlin said, He's a hugely professional driver who's working very, very hard. And he's one of those that you'd say no doubt he'll win a championship at some point providing we can give him a car that's fit for that job, and we're obviously working very hard to achieve that, but he's very technical. He adapts well to different conditions. All good drivers get better over time. They're focused on looking for every opportunity to improve, and when he got pole here last year, it was a surprise for us, because we didn't have a good Friday. We did make some changes to the car, but he did a fantastic job in qualifying to get that. So, he's super focused and no doubt that it'll be part of much success for the team in the future. Mercedes finds itself deeply engaged in a closely contested competition for the second position in the Constructors' Championship, alongside formidable adversaries such as Aston Martin, Ferrari, and McLaren. Shovlin offered insight into the fluctuations in performance among these four teams during each race weekend, saying, There'll be track-specific elements. We look quite good in Barcelona on max downforce, but the fact is, you know, you can't design your car for every single circuit. So you're seeing the nature of the corner speed, whether right is a big factor can come into it. Whether it's an overheating circuit, or one where it's tricky to get the tires to work, whether the balance is more oversteery, all of those things will change the relative performance. And then on top of that, you've got a pretty aggressive development race going on, and you can see that with the steps that Williams made, that McLaren made where people are bringing a lot of performance and the phasing of that is starting to juggle the order a bit. What do you think? Is Lewis Hamilton worth it to you? Does George Russell have what it takes to be a champion? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell for the hottest F1 news.